have Druid back, and Fonzie jumps right into the fight. So much burst damage coming out from Druid. Mango, he wants back in, he kites over. Fonzie stuck in the gauntlet. It's gonna be a kill for Phoenix. They might best jump too. Phoenix, they want his championship, humanist. They're gonna take the ace oh against Team Solo Mid. What a comeback so far. They still gotta end. 2016 will go down as one of the most successful years for Vainglory. Early on in the year, we would see our game be awarded the title of Best Mobile Game at the 2016 Global Mobile Awards. And later on in the year, thousands of us from around the world came together with a shared passion for Vainglory Esports to witness Druid, Mango, and Willy write their names down in Vainglory history as the first world champions. I am here with your world champions, Phoenix Armada from Korea! The game didn't just feel like the best mobile game. It looked like the future of mobile gaming as a whole. The esports scene was thriving. And likewise, Vainglory felt like it was ahead of the curve. With organizations like Cloud9, Team Solo Mid, G2, SK Gaming, and many more already on board, Vainglory felt like it was about to claim its spot as the next biggest mobile game for years to come. Oh! Doing enough by itself. Flash X, Candy Vanguard, Vonti close enough. He picks up the kill. Wow. Team Solo Mid with another ace. They're already in the base. This is going to be game one to TSM. Or at least it appeared that way. In reality, SCMC was losing thousands, if not millions, of dollars trying to legitimize their esports scene. They threw away an incredible amount of money by providing players with lavish accommodations like five-star hotels, renting out the biggest theaters and venues for live events, like the Chinese theater in Hollywood, California, and by providing price pools that were too large for a game that simply wasn't that big just yet. But the truth of the matter is that SCMC trying to legitimize their esports scene was just part of an incredibly big problem. They made multiple mistakes from the day Vainglory was released and throughout the years which ultimately led to the state in which the game is in now. As many of you guys will know, last week uh, we were handed a bit of a surprise on Wednesday when our uh, partner for publishing in the West, Rogue Games, announced that they were no longer going to be the publisher of Vainglory in the West. In fact, they were going to shut off the servers by Friday. Rogue did pull the plug on Vainglory, but SCMC put Vainglory in a coma. Although we should be mad at Rogue for not being more professional with how they handled the situation. Well, you see, SCMC, up. You see, the reason why Vainglory found so much success and gained so much attention at the beginning was because the game was truly so groundbreaking. Good morning. Today, I am thrilled to debut for you Vainglory, the multiplayer battle arena perfected for touch. The evil engine allowed for incredible graphics, not to mention its unique design and touch controls, which so many of us instantly fell in love with. It was truly a MOBA perfected for touch. Sadly, Vainglory being an industry first was actually an enormous problem. When the game was released, many devices were not strong enough to run Vainglory smoothly, especially in regions like Southeast Asia where most people at the time couldn't afford or didn't have access to devices like iPads and newer iPhones to run the game at the quality it was presented on stage. So instantly, SCMC set Vainglory up for failure by forcing the game to wait for the rest of the industry to catch up to it. And SCMC understood most devices couldn't run Vainglory very well. Which is the reason why we would see Vainglory be presented at Apple events. Apple devices were strong enough to run the game. And not to mention, Vainglory advertised the game as a tablet and iPad game at first. At the beginning, the game was highly optimized for usage on iPads and tablets, which significantly shrunk the market they could come after. And when devices somewhat caught up to Vainglory, it was obvious a lot of people had a hard time playing on smaller screens. But I'll dig a little into that later on in the video. Uh, 
I would also like to mention that the game's early success would not change the fact that SEMC was a startup company. They built themselves from the ground up, which was impressive alone, don't get me wrong. But what that meant was that they didn't have millions of dollars just lying around that they could throw at new ideas or plans without any concerns. Unlike Tencent or Riot or other more well-established companies which easily at any point can do that. And that's exactly where the problems begin. Vainglory was never a profitable game. Because of the terrible decisions SEMC made from the very beginning, from the start, SEMC accustomed the player base to having every piece of in-game content easily accessible to them. This idea of play and you can unlock everything you want in the game for free. From skins to heroes, it's playing allowed you to unlock everything in the game you ever wanted to. Which meant in return, SEMC never profited from in-game content. Although this made the game very unique and extremely addicting, truly it was a terrible decision on SEMC's end. They never should have made it so easy for the entire community to unlock every single bit of content in the game for free. It cost them so much money. And when SEMC realized everything in the game being so accessible to the player base was hurting them, they made a lot of changes and added new content to try to regain their ground. We would see a complete new crafting system enter the game, which was very confusing and made it extremely difficult to get skins. To craft a skin, you must discover that skin's blueprint and collect enough essence to unlock it. We saw an increase in hero costs, new additions like talents, hats, battle passes, changes to how new heroes and skins were released every update, and the addition of chests in the shop that incentivized spending. All these changes were good. The problem was that we were already so used to grinding for what we wanted. Unlocking whatever we wanted was satisfying and rewarding to us. So for a lot of us, these changes made us not care about endgame content like skins as much as we used to, which definitely hurt the game a lot. Spending in the game might have increased slightly, but it wasn't enough to help SEMC break even, that's for sure. From the beginning, SEMC should have made it so certain aspects of in-game content could only be unlocked through legitimate purchases or added items that were available for a limited amount of time to incentivize spending in the game. I'm not saying they should have made the game pay to win from the beginning, but certainly making everything for free at the very beginning was not the right thing to do, especially when it cost them so much to run the Vainglory servers behind the scenes. Terrible decisions on numerous levels were made here, and SEMC accustomed the community to something that wasn't profitable in the short or the long term. At Super Evil Megacorp, we're all gamers, through and through. And as game industry professionals, as games industry craftswomen and craftsmen, we are on a mission to make the absolute best multiplayer experiences for touchscreens. You know why? Because mobile gamers deserve better. SEMC presented Vainglory as the MOBA perfected for touch. Unmatched controls, unique game design, buttery smooth gameplay, incredible graphics, but these aspects that made the game so unique and awesome were also the reasons why the game's growth flatlined eventually. Vainglory's touch controls are far more superior than the more common analog controls. That's the truth. But the reality is that playing Vainglory on a phone was very difficult for a lot of people, especially for people who had smaller screens and devices that were not as powerful as an iPhone, for example. And this applies to not just some people, but countries and regions where people easily could afford a phone that could run Mobile Legends with no hassle. But they couldn't afford to run Vainglory because the game took a heavy toll on their devices, which meant a lot of lag, a lot of desync, a lot of connection problems, and overall not very enjoyable gameplay. On top of that, people find analog controls far more convenient because touch controls require you to hold the device a certain way or adjust yourself completely so you could take full advantage of your screen, which meant analog controls were far more appealing to a lot of people simply because of its convenience. 
This all came down to a case of best is not always better. Vainglory was far better than any other MOBA, both in terms of graphics and controls, but it pushed aside a huge number of people because of its uniqueness, which hurt the game's growth in the long run. And a factor that played a huge role into the game's growth was advertising. Vainglory not advertising enough was constantly a talking point in the community, especially when we had other games in other MOBAs like Mobile Legends blasting us with ads every day. SCMC did have a few honorable moments like when they were incorporated into the iPhone commercial, but that wasn't enough at all. Although it was very cool to see Vainglory come to life in a commercial like that. The only time Vingloy was truly advertised in this commercial was in this one frame where you can barely read the name of the game. Other than that, this commercial served Vingloy no purpose. But why did Vingloy not advertise like Mobile Legends did for example? Well, remember what I said earlier about Vainglory having money problems? Well, marketing costs a lot of money, especially when you want to achieve the reach and success Mobile Legends saw. But the difference between Mobile Legends and Vainglory is that Mobile Legends was making millions. And in fact, they still are. So they can afford to spend millions on advertising. The few times Vainglory actually saw some form of return in terms of marketing was when PewDiePie uploaded that one Vainglory video when OGN hosted VPL because OGN put the game in front of people who would actually be interested in a MOBA when organizations like TSM, Cloud9, and more joined the scene. Because when orgs of this category join a game, that means the game is doing something right. But obviously, this isn't enough to become a household name. Like Mobile Legends is in Indonesia or the Philippines, for example. SCMC obviously could have taken all the money they put into esports and used a portion of it for marketing and also to expand on many other areas of the game. They could have easily had ESL host tournaments for them. And people would have joined. People loved the game and they had a passion for competing. But still, even if they had done all that, Seeing growth would have required so much money because the game was so unique and different. And even then, if they had put millions of dollars into advertising, the returns probably wouldn't have been crazy good because a lot of people nowadays are already so invested in other games. I had put so much time into the game already, so trying and playing another game wasn't on my agenda. And a lot of people felt that way when they heard about this game called The Vainglory a 3v3 MOBA. And honestly, the best advertising Vainglory ever got was from us, the community. From us telling our friends and family, that's the best advertising Vainglory ever got and will ever get. So for you watching this video right now, it sucks that we never got the advertising this game deserved. But I appreciate you for helping this game grow at some point. Despite what you might think, the reason why a 5v5 map was added to Vainglory was because SCMC needed to grow the game and they needed to grow the game fast. 3v3 was unique, it was fun and got Vainglory very far, but it wasn't an idea that would scale well over time because of the poor decisions that were made. SCMC needed to find a way to make more money and adding a 5v5 map was exactly the way to do that. A 5v5 map could push Vainglory to the next level by appealing to a broader range of people and bringing them in because of the game's incredible design and graphics alone. So what went wrong here? Well, the ideas and the plans for the future of Vainglory were incredible, but the execution was horrendous. The Sovereign's Rise was the beginning of a reoccurring pattern that Super Evil Megacorp threw themselves into. They presented, they built hype around, and excited the community over a new update or an up and coming addition to the game, but sadly never met expectations because they just didn't have the time to give us the quality we always expected from them. The quality they got all of us used to throughout the years. They had to rush to push out major projects because the game was slowly sinking, but them rushing things really only helped them sink faster. The Sovereign's Rise was globally released full of glitches, 
bugs and was given to us, the community, as an incomplete product. At the same time, diehard 3v3 players were slowly left behind and pushed aside. But it was understandable as CMC needed to put all their efforts into the 5v5 map. But the issue at the end was that they never managed to break even at all with 5v5 either. Vainglory on Steam was incredibly glitchy and overall poorly optimized for PC, leading to numerous bad reviews from new players who asked for fixes and never got them, or simply from players who tried the game and never came back altogether, which gave Vainglory a terrible look for its debut on Steam. The addition of joystick and in-game voice chat walked the same path. Although these two additions were not necessarily bad, they were not very well executed. All of these updates, changes, and new additions were supposed to attract players from other communities, build the player base immensely, and catapult Vainglory to the next level. But that never happened. SCMC's poor execution always came back to haunt them. They waited too long to make moves, and when they realized they needed to make a move, Vainglory was already going down, so they would rush to get things out. And they didn't prioritize certain aspects of the game, which they had to. And that slowly brought the game down in quality and eventually brought the whole game down to the dirt. You see, the issue with Vainglory Esports was the massive spending that went into it. So much unnecessary spending that went into the game just so Vainglory could have an image to try to make the game appear legitimate and as a tier 1 esports when truly they could not afford one but that clearly backfired it wasn't sustainable to rent out major theaters and major venues or provide players with these crazy accommodations like i said esports wasn't all of scmc's problems they made so many mistakes behind the scenes which created this massive monster they couldn't stop at the end and that monster eventually turned on them and they had to abandon ship or they were gonna sink along with it which is very sad because this game this game had been everything for me